Hello, and welcome to our program about Meher Baba's message on drugs. My name is Mary Lloyd Dugan. I'm from the Avatar Meher Baba Center of Southern California. And with me in the studio today, I have a guest, Dr. Robert Dreyfus, who had the good fortune to meet Meher Baba in 1965. Before we bring Robert into our conversation, though, I'd like to just go back 20 years to a time when people were experimenting with drugs as a possible pathway to spiritual enlightenment. There was a real search for God at that time, and people were using drugs in hopes that drugs would bring them closer to God. At that time, Meher Baba spoke out strongly from his long silence and said this, if drugs could bring one to God, God would not be worthy of being God. He said that drugs were harmful physically, mentally, and spiritually. Today, in our drug-ridden society, we seem to hear about drugs everywhere. Crack, cocaine, marijuana, Valium. The list is seemingly endless. And we find drugs everywhere we turn, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in our professional sports teams, at parties, on the streets. And yet Meher Baba's message remains the same. Drugs are harmful, physically, mentally, and spiritually. They do not help us in our lives, and they do not help us to become closer to God, which is, after all, according to Meher Baba, the only reality. Now, I'd like to bring Robert Dreyfus into the conversation. Robert is a doctor and has worked for 12 years counseling uh, drug abuse with adolescents and adults. He was the director of a drug abuse prevention program, and now he is a doctor of Chinese medicine. Robert, welcome. Thank so you. glad you could join us today. It's Thanks for coming. You know, drugs seem to be so all-pervasive in our time right now, and yet Baba said that drugs were harmful. Uh, you had the chance to meet Meher Baba mm -hmm. in 1965, right? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about your visit to him and what he told you about drugs? Certainly, Mary Lloyd. I'll, I'll try to make it short. Uh, the early 60s were, for me, as well as for many other people of my generation, a time of fierce exploration. Uh, the Vietnam War was occurring, there was uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, there was a great deal of fear and unrest and a demand for change. Mm -hmm. This prompted many people, certainly including myself, to try to find a way through the seemingly endless maze of conflicting ideas and opinions about what reality is. Mm -hmm. And for many of us at that time, in the early 60s, it involved the use of drugs, particularly of psychedelic drugs, which seemed to hold promise that it could take one to, if not the other shore, then perhaps to the beach. Mm -hmm. um, it proved to be false promise, but it did have one uh, very great effect on many of us in that it, it clearly demonstrated that there was an everyday reality totally other than what we normally experience. The problem was that many people became trapped on the trip, as it were, and didn't realize that it was a stepping stone and that now they had to begin to work on themselves. I see. And when you met Meher Baba, were you surprised by what he had said about drugs? It seemed, I was surprised, but it, it was, totally obvious in the sense that what is natural is, is totally obvious. Um, it was clear to me from my own reading and my own searching that there was no indication whatsoever in any of the spiritual teachings that had any true credibility that drugs were a means on the path, much less the path itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and that very absence prompted people who are thoughtful to question what was then simply the latest in the chemical array that was so tempting to so many. I see. Well, Meher Baba spoke of God being the only reality mm. that there is and all of us living in a maze, as you're calling it, of confusion or illusion. Um, 
you're, what you're saying is that even though drugs might have given a glimmer of a different kind of consciousness, that there could be no shortcut? No shortcuts, alas. <laughs> if only were that simple. I see. Um, and it demands great work. Uh, it demands coming to terms with selfishness. It demands reorienting one's values and attitudes. It demands that we face things as they are without the illusion of escapes or buffers. Mm -hmm. That only by seeing things as they are and dealing with them as they arrive and arise can any significant change be made in ourselves and therefore in society in which we live. Sounds like a long and slow process. It's the only game in town. <laughs> what do you think is the best tool? Oh, without question, service. Service. Love and service to others. Keeping the compassionate mind and cleansing oneself of all of the many delusions which hide us from our own true self, mm -hmm. which is exactly who Mayor Baba asserts that he is. Mm -hmm. That he's the one who we really are, and that we have to pair away that which is not him. I see. So it's almost almost a question of, of molting so that we yeah. can get new wings to fly, as really. it were. What it is is that essentially drugs reinforce the illusion uh -huh. that we're separate. Uh -huh. And in reality, as he so, so eloquently expresses in his silence, we're really one. It's just that we think we're separate. And unfortunately, drugs, as I said, reinforce that illusion of separateness. Mm -hmm. I see. And therefore, of self-interest. Meher Baba is also known as the Awakener, and Robert was telling me earlier today about drugs almost seeming to be a dream within a dream. If Meher Baba is the Awakener to awaken us to the one reality, which is God, to tell, telling us that what we need to do is to find our true selves, which is God, and merge with that oneness, then drugs would seem to be almost two generations separated from that, would you say? Very much so. I think that you mentioned before the pervasiveness of drugs in our society, not just here, in, in Europe as well, and in many other cultures. It's, it's a sign of people's intense dissatisfaction mm -hmm. with the way things are, with our continual emphasis on accumulating more goods and the dream of material happiness, which is empty. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's not worth striving for, it just means that perspective has to be very present in one's decisions and simply to choose that which is not conducive to one's own long-range happiness is indeed the height of foolishness. Sounds to me like you're saying thinking of other people rather than thinking of yourself would be a great benefit on this path. If we all did it, all the problems would be solved. Even at the cost of our own suffering. Especially that. I see. What was it like meeting Meher Baba? You traveled all the way from Boston to India, and much of that trip was over land, wasn't it? Except for the Atlantic Ocean. Yes. <laughs> I don't think you walked on water. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, for me, that, that time was a, an intense process of self-searching and self-discovery. Um, it was a time when uh, I was being forced to come to terms with my own experimentation and the journey to India was, as Walt Whitman said, was a journey to more than India. It, it seemed very clear to me that Mayor Baba knew exactly what he uh, spoke of and that his assertion that he was the one whom all religions promise and whom everyone awaits was abundantly clear at least enough so that I had to go find out for myself. Mm -hmm. And in that long overland journey to India, it made me come to terms with much in myself that distanced myself from him, uh, particularly drugs. And midway there, I decided that it was time to finally put them to rest. When I came to India and met Mayor Baba, which it's certainly the most extraordinary experience of my life. <coughs> he reinforced that by stating in no uncertain terms that drug for, drugs were harmful 
and they were delusion with an illusion and not to take them. Mm -hmm. And he sent you back to this <coughs> country. <coughs> Pardon? He sent you back to this country, didn't he, to work against drugs? He said to bring his message about drugs and his message of love and truth to others. Uh, I think that what he was doing in many ways was helping me overcome my own past uh, and the consequences of it, but primarily to begin that service which I alluded to in helping others in any way possible. It was much broader and simpler than I had anticipated. Uh, there was no haranguing people on a soapbox in Hayden Ashbury. Uh, it was a little more subtle than that, as indeed Meher Baba is much more subtle than that. And it was an education process. It was talking on TV shows, on radio shows. Um, we wrote letters to every college newspaper in the United States. Um, there was a great deal of, of working with small groups, with churches, and simply sharing what Mayor Baba has so eloquently expressed um, in the most hum human and humane way possible, and doing it from the ground of our own experience. It wasn't something outside of ourselves from which we spoke. It was very much germane to the whole issue of who am I, what am I doing here, mm -hmm. and how can I find some measure of happiness in the process. Mm -hmm. I see. Maybe I should read this quote exactly what Meher Baba said to you at the time you were with him. Meher Baba said, Tell those who indulge in these drugs that it is harmful physically, mentally, and spiritually, and that they should stop the taking of these drugs. Your duty is to tell them, regardless of whether they accept what you say or if they ridicule or humiliate you, to boldly and bravely face these things. Leave the results to me. You are to bring my message to those ensnared in the drug net of illusion that they should abstain, that the drugs will bring more harm than good. I send my love to them. Well, he certainly, I know that Richard Alpert had written to Meher Baba because mm -hmm. he thought that he had made a great discovery with the drugs. And Meher Baba said the same thing to him. That's yes. Baba Ramdas. And that I, I remember that you all had been on the Joe Pine Show, if anybody remembers that years and years ago. <laughs> that must have been quite an experience. Indeed it was. Yeah. Um, and today, I guess, it's the same thing, but how would you counsel somebody today who is so glazed over by so many drugs? I mean, everywhere we turn, as I said. You know, I think that the current efforts being made in the United States to address the situation are just scratching the surface. Uh, more, more police and more treatment programs are not the answer. That's like digging a well after you're thirsty. Mm. It has to be very much more oriented towards education in the schools, particularly the young children, the elementary school, so that the right values and attitudes can be addressed and hopefully uh, personalized for people. It's, it's the only way to really solve the ongoing situation. There is no other way. Fighting the drug traffickers and all that necessary as it is is just, it's like throwing rocks at the ocean. It doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Changing people in their hearts and in their minds by increasing their clarity about what is real and what is not is the way to totally alter the, this terrible situation in which so many people find themselves. Mm -hmm. We're very lucky that Meher Baba chose this time to come among us and there is hope about this war with drugs for a, a happy solution. Meher Baba said, Humanity will attain to a new mode of being and life through the free and unhampered interplay of pure love from heart to heart. I know we're all looking forward to that time. I know <laughs> I am. Um, once again, we've been referring to Meher Baba as the avatar, the one who is waking us to ourselves. He said, I have come not to teach, but to awaken. And in a moment, we'll take a look 
at a movie put together by Pete Townsend of The Who and Ginny Katz of clips of Meher Baba from all periods of his life. Uh, would you like to say anything about <laughs> the movie? I no, think it's very good. It's, yeah, it's, it's well nice. worth watching. Yeah. Um, let me see what else I could read to you for, from Meher Baba. Uh, Alan Cohen, who is another person who met Meher Baba, who followed him and also worked against drugs, gives these things about how to go clean. A sympathetic attitude which includes self-education on the part of teachers, counselors, and administrators. Information, which means offering a solid library on drugs to provide data on the psychological and physiological and spiritual effects of drug use, plus laws pertaining to drug use. Bringing in expert sources, including ex-users, to support or expand written materials. And encouraging the alternatives, which point students to non-chemical ways of finding increased consciousness.